hello there, hello there. Can you hear me on the camera? Uh, this is Larry Podzoid, Podzabinski. I want at you again, saying peace to you now and be it left, right, and in the middle and forever. Uh, but anyway, I want to talk about my uh, book that uh, in the grip of paranoid schizophrenia. Uh, the uh, second edition was published in uh, I don't know what 2010 maybe. Uh, the first edition was published in 2000 October 2007 I believe originally. And the, the first edition is right here. And in the, in the grip of uh, Paranoid Schizophrenia by Larry Posobinski. And uh, the second edition is right here. And w what is different about these editions is uh, the, the local newspaper editor who covered the story of my book being published in the first edition at that time offered me a free second edition edit uh, for her portfolio to go into editing and things, you know. So I, I said yes, and uh, so she she came up with a second edition edit, and she we she uh, we didn't work electronically in the, the, the days. We worked uh, where I had a hard, provided her with a hard copy. She then read and applied grammar rules. She was with a journalist degree, uh, a journalism degree, and as an editor, she edited for me. And uh, her name's Erin Donnelly, and. Uh, She's recently agreed to, um, well, after uh, several years of the book being in second edition print, uh, well, in the first place, I'm not into it to make money on it. You know, I'm into it to educate people about society, what people, what, what, about what goes on in the psychotic mind, schizophrenic mind, why people act that way. Uh, so, uh, the second edition edit, uh, she agreed to, do, I, I, after several years mulling it over, uh, different people had told me, they put the book, everybody loved the first part of the book, and people put the book down where, after it was when I got well in the story, and, uh, and so, uh, because what I wrote next then was, that I always wanted to write the great philosophy, uh, paper, philosopher, be the great philosopher, you know, I mean, so that, there was a big expose, like, on that, that came after the getting well part in the story. And, uh, and that was deleted it's in its entirety on the third edition edit. Uh, so uh, then uh, it was edited from there to the end mainly. But uh, what, what I changed originally in the first edition, the, the first chapter is now in the third edition, the first three chapters, and the second edition, the first two chapters. It was way too long, and I had to split it again for the third edition, trying to shorten up the long first chapter. But the story starts. Uh, in, 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 a, in a childhood and memories, you know, of a childhood and growing up and uh, having a basic biological conflict, uh, biological clock conflict with my mother from a young age uh, in terms of what I should be doing and, and uh, what I, you know, felt like I should be doing. But uh, so, so there's the, uh, for the people who don't believe in the medical model of schizophrenia, where your brain's not formed right, and you take medication, and it goes gets straightened out, and you you're looking for that traumatic childhood experience that's not in the book. I mean, because uh, the only thing that comes close to it uh, well, that I didn't write was uh, because my well was my real mother Simone, not my stepmother Katie, uh, but my real mother Simone was. Uh, uh, very vocally uh, uh, cussing uh, uh, like a sailor when I was a young child, and today they consider that verbal psychological abuse, mental abuse, or whatever you know. But uh, back in 1963 or whenever this went on, uh, I was 62. I mean, it, it didn't, you know, it was considered normal, I guess. I don't know. But she she uh, she used to have her fits, you know. So uh, I didn't write about that because she was still living when I started the book, but. Uh, that the traumatic childhood experience is missing from the, the, for the psycho, psycho babble uh, version of schizophrenia and why it exists. I mean, I, I didn't buy that in, in the course of the history of my living with it, for instance, 1975, uh, uh, currently to 2016. Uh, but, uh, uh, well, so. 
Let me hit my electric cigarette here. Part of the purpose of this video is to test this new camera and see if the video remains in sync with the audio, remains in sync with the video, which I, I think it does. But I'm not still testing. The, I'm still testing this camera. Uh, so, uh, so the third edition takes out uh, the uh, philosophy and religion out of the book and replaces it with more information about the illness and, and uh, what it's like to live with it. And aspects like the electric cigarette is. Actually, I have a letter from my doctor I could read if I would have thought to get one. I don't have a copy of it handy. But uh, in, in 19, I came down with the illness in 1975 when I was 17, my senior year of high school. And uh, uh, so until 1994, November, uh, before, well, it was the week before, one week before Thanksgiving when the medication took hold. And the new medication that the uh, actual CIA told who I was calling me back and calling them uh, told me there's a new antipsychotic, second generation. You want a new one? There's a new one available. Ask for it. Look, seek it, and you'll find it. She told me. Her name's in the book. Uh, but uh, so so I found Risperdal that uh, made all the difference in the world, uh, the right kind of difference uh, at the time from the previous uh, psychotic 19 years I'd spent in the throes or grip or prisoner to the psychosis, uh, uh, which is the nature of the book, In the Grip of Paranoid Schizophrenia, it got to be such paranoid delusions that the government was using uh, replicated UFO technology against me, uh, and, and, and then I became John Lennon to a bigger UFO, and, and, you know, exchanged places with him, he exchanged places with me, and I became him, or he became me, and, and, and uh, and I was in the government space calling the CIA and, and the National Security Administration, the White House, and had the Secret Service in town three times. It's all in the book, all the details of all this. And, uh, and see, see, I got my Secret Service file in the book, or it's five pages, I believe, from it, corroborating the story in the book of their visits on visit, but, uh, and some other pages where they were getting ready to prosecute me later from the hospital when I wouldn't stop calling collect. They gave me numbers to call collect to the White House and to the CIA so they could know my whereabouts, I suppose. It would reckon later, you know what I mean? But uh, but uh, at the time I thought I was in, you know, I mean, with the psychotic stuff. They were getting ready to press federal harassment charges on me. And so this is all, the, the Secret Service file was fully scanned into the book, uh, the third edition, the first, the second, and third edition. And that, that part didn't change. And, uh, so, uh, the CIA began calling at a certain time, it was September of 1993, and, uh, in response to my year, since 1987, letters and tapes, cassette tapes, preaching, you know, about the CIA battle fleet, uh, or the interstellar battle fleet was going to kick their ass for their replicated UFO technology, uh, as, uh, funny as that can seem, it was actually psychotically reality to me at the time. Is, is actually being real, you know. When you're psychotic, you, you, your delusions and hallucinations become, uh, you, you re treat them as reality, like a, you know, and it, it, it's just all distorted. It's, it's, it's a major distortion of the plain evident reality we all know, as, as you know, as we see it and around us. I mean, the nature of reality, a philosopher would say, is like the nature of reality. You know, it's there. You know, I mean. But in psychosis, it's not. It's the things you fabricate. Your mind fabricates by being aberrant or, or abnormal uh, onto reality that, that it superimposes, like all these hallucinations and then you delusions you get going. And so, you, and then in paranoid schizophrenia, you pick up the phone, you dial the CIA, and you talk to them, and you, you get the exchange, you dial numbers inside the extern place, and I was in all kind of trouble. But but uh, but uh, so the, the story is about this. And uh, and, uh, and and the, the parts of the book that everybody loved, the psychotic years, and what goes on inside a psychotic mind, I did not uh, change. I don't think very much. I even look at during the third edition edit. There's like four chapters or three where all that stuff, psychotic stuff goes on. But uh, so that, that that's all uh, a wonderful uh, because I started so early on after it occurred. I remembered it freshly in my mind. Ver vision of what goes on inside a psychotic mind. My, my psychiatrist, uh, Dr. Mora Andronics, foreword of the book, 
uh, I've asked the editor, uh, Aaron, to uh, see if it's appropriate yet in this new third edition or if it needs changed by Dr. Andronic or by the editor. So Aaron's working on it now, and I'll have to be busy and not have time for anything while I work on this, getting the third edition ready. When I get it back from her, whenever that'll be, I'm not really, there's no real set date on this. But I'd like to get it done this year, uh, by the end of the year. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, uh, but uh, what else is different? The electric cigarette being uh, 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 medically beneficial for schizophrenia, and also, uh, you, you can Google this, nicotine and schizophrenia are nicotinic receptors, and schizophrenia or nicotine and Alzheimer's is good for that too. It's known, it was so disheartening to watch medications go up to the FDA for approval. The one, two, and three, the third went into the phase three trials and got shot down. So I have this, and now they're going to make these illegal in a couple of years. I got to call that hotline. I have a number for the FDA set up and see what it deals with that. I have a prescription letter from my doctor that appears in the third edition. It'll be in there stating that, uh, you know, this should be counted as a medical, legal, uh, medical uh, 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 implement in my, uh, medication in my life. Uh, so, it was based on having schizophrenia, a residual type, a paranoid type was cured by years of staying in treatment, and effective treatment, and, and uh, taking care of myself, and I don't have any paranoid problems now. I mean, so I'm, I was like so many years without that, and she changed the diagnosis to residual type. So I, cause I still have these residual symptoms like needing the nicotine every so often to think right and function right. To remember it causes deficit working, deficits in spatial working memory it, it occur and nicotine counteracts that. Where you look around you and you're familiar with your world when you see what you, you familiarize yourself. Well, the, the deficits in that you can forget. It's all blank. It's like two, two, two dimensional instead of three dimensional. I've lived with this for years before I quit smoking. It's been say, over six years and two months presently that I've touched tobacco because of the electric cigarette. And now I just find out in the last week they're going to make them, their deeming regulations illegal. 75% of them in two years, the FDA. Well, they shoot down medications for this with schizophrenia and Alzheimer's. And I have to wonder, not like a paranoid person, but like some uh, elderly, mature people I've mentioned this to, you know, nicotine in uh, non-time release form like these drugs that go up for the schizophrenia, the same drug goes up for an Alzheimer's test, and they shoot it down for that too. Because do they want to find a cure for Alzheimer's with a pill? And then the whole the Alzheimer's industry goes down the tubes in, in America? I mean, you know, these political motivations for, uh, you know, uh, waves and trends in uh, science and medicine and technology and who knows what, you know, social consciousness or uh, political consciousness, or if that's a consciousness at all, I mean, anymore, well, it's a joke, it's craziness. I've been crazy, and I've come back, and now I see the world around me is going crazy. So anyway, my, back to my book. Uh, so so it, it ends then in a new epilogue, taking out uh, some uh, uh, other stuff that didn't belong in the book. Uh, it, it ends with a letter from a, a, an authority figure corroborating my uh, uh, story and congratulating me on my 20 years at that point of wellness. Uh, uh, so the third edition is happening, and uh, uh, I would like to see it done by the end of 2016, but uh, this year. But uh, I, I have no guarantee on my time or what how it's. It's like my hours is the other way I'm affected. You know, spin the wheel. You know, I mean the wheel. You know, I mean. You know, how many, what time am I going to go to bed? What time am I going to get up? I mean, how long am I going to sleep this time? Yeah. Risperdal causes extended sleep duration as a side effect. I'm convinced that's what it is at this point. I've known that all along. I've been taking it, and it's been getting worse as I get older, but it's kind of lightened up on me right now a little bit, a little bit. But I can easily sleep 18 hours or 20 or 22, you know, if I'm really just... It's just so hard to wake up. I mean, with the Risperdal is the only side effect I have to it besides tachycardia, which is uh, managed by uh, Cardizem or uh, Diltiazem uh, CD time release. Uh, uh, it's a blood pressure heart medicine. But my doctors think I have hypertension. I got it for tachycardia from the Risperdal in a cardiac care unit in 1999. So, uh, so, uh, 
you know, so this is all in the book, my whole life story with the illness and how it, it's affected me, and uh, different details with the CIA and what was going on there, and there, there's pictures of, of letters addressed to Reverend John Lennon, I thought I was John Lennon back from the dead in the Buddhist transmigration of soul, and there's letters, couple of scans of letters from the British Embassy or Passport Office and the British News uh, agency or something, or information agency or something uh, in New York, I mean, just Reverend John Lennon, uh, owner of Lennon or whatever, you know, at my address. And uh, so uh, it's, it's affected a wide range of people, a wide array of people. Uh, this is also in the book that uh, the last time the CIA called me, 18 months after I'd been home from the hospital, she told me that, that you know, you really caused quite a stir. You had CNN calling us about your allegations about being John Lennon secretly back on a UFO transmigration, you know, and so uh, it affected a lot of people because I had a lot of phone numbers and I used to just call them up and I had numbers where I go through without even having to put money in the pay phone. They wanted to hear what I had to say, I think, but I'm not going to draw any conspiracy theories or uh, I'm sorry to the government and uh, peace, peace to you, I mean, uh, you know, We've got a lot of good things going on in the world, and uh, technology-wise, and uh, uh, in different ways. I mean, politically, some things are going good. I mean, uh, but uh, out there, uh, and in the world, I mean, in the country, it's like a turmoil here between this election this year. It's crazy. But uh, but uh, I should run for president. I could probably, um, if I could run on my own hours, 30-hour day, one day, and 18 hours of sleep, and you know. I shouldn't say that, but uh, but uh, but but it's all in the book. My hours of sleep, the weirdness, the genetically hereditary factors known to be schizophrenic genes involved in that, as well as the risk reduction and the sleep duration. So uh, you know, uh, it's a good book about what goes on in the psychotic mind. And now I've been refinished it with 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 facts about the illness and how I live with it and and how it's affected me over the years and of wellness and how I've changed, you know, with more medication being added 10 years later and, or, or, or 10 or 11 years later, I mean, uh, and, and, and 12 years later, more medication being added after the initial Risperdal saved my life from being in a federal prison for harassing the White House. This story is all on, in this book, In the Grip of Paranoid Schizophrenia, you're looking at the second edition. But there'll be a third edition, how it will look will be generic and probably more like this one, you know, I mean, but, uh, but, uh, but I'll tell you what, if you want to buy it, it'll be at lulu.com for sure, l-u-l-u.com. I have to buy a, a distribution package to get an ISBN number to distrib distribution package for Amazon and other book places, but it, it's a lot cheaper to buy the digital download. And actually, I make like three times as much money by the digital download, and even though it costs half as much as the book. So uh, I don't, it's, I'm, not, I'm not in this to make money. I'm just saying, yeah, it's like so. So it's a good story. Uh, it, I, when the editor gives it back to me, I'll have to work electronically now through the, the editing program and uh, and go to the changes she attracted in my manuscript I presented her with. And, and see how she recommends to change this or that, or she puts comment bubbles in when they do work with an editor, and you have to they highlight text and say things about it that good, bad, or change it, or refix it, or this about it or that about it. You know, working with an editor is a job. Uh, I did this once before with Aaron, and it was in a hard copy book. Now it's electronically. So we'll see how we can get through this and get the third edition for you all who are interested in paranoid schizophrenia and how it can be cured through effective treatment over a period of years and dedication and commitment to stay in treatment and uh, responsibly take your medicine every day so the psychosis stays away. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know what more to say right now. Uh, this was supposed to be a little update about the book, so I guess that's it. So now I get to see if the camera stays in sync on this new camera. Uh, you know, my, my, wonderful friend Linda Penny sent me. Uh, thank you, Linda. Uh, and all my friends for uh, their support. And, uh, and uh, I hope we can I can turn this book into something that society can benefit from. 
you know, like I said, the Secret Service files in there, I, I offended society with my psychotic display about their UFO technology and got their attention, and the whole story of, of, of it was made a good TV series, I'm told by one thinker type, I'm told to make a good movie by, uh, who tells me that, somebody tell, else tells me that, but I think, it's, oh yeah, that guy, uh, but, uh, but, uh, so, uh, so, I'll see what I can turn in the grip of Paranoid Schizophrenia, copyright, Larry Podsabinsky. So, uh, thank you for listening about my update on the book, and I hope my editor, Aaron Donnelly, the best in their editing and skills on this one, and in life in general, and as an editor. She's a wonderful editor. So, we'll see what we can turn it into. This has been Larry, Dr. Pod, Podzoid, Podsabinsky. In the colored lights, can you see me? I'm watching on a screen on this camera. This is different. Catch you later.